Hello comic book fans, here's Earl Grey. I've read recently The Eternat by uh, the Argentinian comic creators Hector German Osterheld and Francisco Solan Lopez. Uh, I think I'll butcher um, every name in this video, but you have to bear with me. As usual, I must say. Um, so, and I figured out that this book is not the only one from Argentinian comic creators in my collection. I have quite a few uh, right in front of me. And I filed them actually under Spanish or Portuguese or what not uh, comic creators uh, thought of them. Um, but they're all from Argentina, so it would be a neat thing to do a video about them, I thought. But first, the Eternat, um, the, written by uh, German Hermann Osterheld, and uh, his family vanished during the Argentinian uh, dictatorship, end of the 70s, uh, beginning 80s. Um, so it's my, maybe a tiny bit of cosmic ju uh, justice that we get now the celebration of a big part of his uh, comic book writing work in this really nice, fantastic uh, package, almost yeah, too shiny, shimmery for a book that's actually just, just in quote on quote of just a black and white comic. You can uh, read about the gruesome details of uh, the circumstances of his vanishing in the foreword of this book here. You can see here the reflection of my collection. So, very shiny, very nice. Mm. And the story is an apocalyptic tale. Uh, several friends in Buenos Aires uh, played cards and in, suddenly they're in, amidst a post-apocalyptic world. Toxic snowflakes fallen uh, from the sc uh, sky and killing everybody who has skin contact with them. So these friends figure out uh, to to survive at least a few days. They built themselves uh, such uh, safety suits out of a diving suit and there's a similarity to The Walking Dead um, because uh, they soon find out that the real threat seems to come from the surviving humans that kill for survive and they are themselves ready to kill uh, to survive but there's a threat behind it uh, as soon you figure out this is an alien invasion and it's uh, therefore it's uh, actually a science fiction tale You can see with the snowflake thing, maybe uh, also a metaphor for a country uh, like Argentina that was back in the 60s when this book was made, uh, already not the safe haven of democracy. There was a constant change of democracy and tyranny or dictatorship. Um, so that real freedom was actually only possible in your own four walls uh, within your own uh, living room, living space, so to speak. Uh, and all the public room was somehow a forbidden zone. So maybe you can see this as a metaphor. Um, all in all, uh, but this book is much more, and I don't know if the um, authors uh, intended it to be a matatha for the political um, circumstances of that time. They said uh, 
they actually wanted to do some kind of Robinson Crusoe uh, story. It's a gripping story. I've read it from cover to cover. Not in one day because this uh, was way too, too uh, well, way too much. Uh, 1350 pages or so. But Lopez uh, handles this, his black and white spaces and line work very masterfully. Um, it was really, really a good read and highly recommended. And I've done these uh, best of science fiction comic books in the last year uh, videos, uh, video. And this was would be my number one science fiction book if I had read it back then. So, and this is the guy, uh, Hector German Osterheld, who thought out all this uh, time traveling, end of the world stuff. And Francesco Solano Lopez, who drew all that stuff. And here is another very important, maybe the most important Argentinian comic creator, Alberto Breccia. Uh, as it's written here, the father of the Argent of Argentinian comics. He was born 1919 in Uruguay, but uh, he lived uh, most of his life in Argentina. And Alberto Breccia uh, did a version of um, the Eternaut as well, which I don't own, but this must be a shorter episode, I think, more postscriptum to the Eternaut than anything. A major work from Breccia is this book he did with one Mr. Juan Sasturain, Peramus. This comic was done um, in the beginning 80s during it begins uh, during the time of the military regime in Argentina and it re reflects clearly uh, this uh, these circumstances um, Peramus is a man with no name um, he he was trailed by the henchmen of the regime and he betrayed his loved ones and couldn't cope with the guilt. He lost his memory. And like Odysseus, he is sent on a strange journey through Argentina. Originally, it was uh, serialized uh, in Argentina in packages of some pages. This is uh, a Mr. White Snow who rules an uh, island in Latin America where our anti-hero anti -hero, um, finds refuge and some friends. The amazing thing, of course, as you can see here, is the style Alberto Breccia uh, put his, uh, his pictures in. It's uh, where this technique uh, that you may know from kindergarten, where you put a piece on pa of paper um, with color on a another piece of paper and scrape it off, and there are uh, you use these emerging structures and he does this so masterfully and so precise and all the main characters and all characters are clearly distinguishable from uh, each other in all different situations and uh, motions and just with some uh, brush strokes you can draw some horses and you actually, uh, exactly know what everything uh, everyone's doing and 
he still finds places where you can pl fool around with this, these uh, dark structures. And it's, uh, I think it's a good choice that uh, they reprinted. Or maybe this comic was um, originally in this black and white tone because in the colored version you see here on the front cover uh, maybe some of the sinister atmosphere that this uh, comic uh, conveys gets lost. So, I can't tell you the whole story, but uh, very important. Uh, Mr. Borges, Juan Luis Borges, don't know how to pronounce his name, but he turns up, uh, up and he's one of the main characters. This uh, very well-known writer. And he's not blind uh, in opposition to reality. And he gets the Nobel Prize in uh, also, and unfortunately, in, uh, in opposition to the reality here. So there's much stuff going on, uh, including an homage to the Eternaut. Uh, somewhere in this book, uh, the Eternaut is mentioned, which was very neat. So and here's the second band, uh, volume of um, Peramus. And... The third volume of Paramus. These are collections uh, that the German publisher Carlsen did in the beginning 90s. Uh, 1994 was the last one. So these two volumes contain another comic that was drawn by Alberto Breccia, Mortzinder. Um, this is a story written by Hector German Osterheld, uh, who, uh, who wrote uh, also Eternaut, the Eternaut. And uh, it's about this guy, Mortzinder. Mortzinder is an undead guy here who helps an antiquarian, this old man, Ezra Winston, uh, in revaluing um, antiques and Mozinder is uh, quite an expert in this regard because he's a reviver he he lived many 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 uh, times on this planet and always after his dead death he uh, ca uh, came back to life but he had uh, very fun times uh, on Earth because he was sometimes the slave, sometimes a prisoner, always the, the underdog who experienced the dark sides of life uh, in very different roles. But he was a slave in old Egypt and in... Uh, he, built, he helped uh, building the Tower of Babylon, which he thought it was an amazing project, so he uh, wasn't too fond of the bitter end of the, this arch architecture project. This was a fun twist, I think. But overall, it's a very sinister tale of one old man and his undead friend. A bit wordy, like many old comics are, but this um, artwork from Breccia is really amazing, as you can see. I mean, that's how you have to use your blacks. And no color required, really. 
The next comic, Billy Holiday by Munoz, uh, drawn by Munoz, written by uh, Juan Sampaio. Don't know their forenames, but they are not mentioned anywhere here. This is a comic I've ha I have uh, for a very long time, and um, it's quite fascinating how uh, Munoz handles the black and white shapes and, and forms and uh, the rhythm of his panels. And it's not so much about the, the details, but the appearance of the whole page that counts here. Look at stuff like this. I love this comic so much that uh, I uh, didn't knew anything about Billie Holiday or her music. But this comic got me intrigued in her music. And uh, so I bought, back in the day, um, six CD sampler with all her hits or so and it was one of the best investments music wise I ever did. By the same team Munoz uh, drawing Sampaio writing um, is this book around this detective guy Alex Sinner Weird Blues. This is a thick hard cover put out by Edition Moderne same here same publisher as here and uh, in this book, it's uh, maybe Frank Miller comes to mind. Um, uh, but I guess uh, Sin City was drawn after this. So I, I don't think that Frank Miller swiped from these uh, drawings, but Maybe they have the, the bows, both the same roots, uh, and uh, they are in the expressionistic uh, vein of art. And here is a comic where Munoz, the slender one, and Sampaio visit their creation, Alexina, in a Grand Molsny way of um, telling a story. Yeah, better portray of both of them here, maybe. On yours on the left and Sampaio on the right side. So this is an envisioning of um, the hard-boiled New York crime world and uh, the tough, tough guy, uh, Alex Sinner, from two guys who actually never were in New York, I believe. Uh, and again, it's a very unique use of these black and whites. So if you like these uh, examples of art, is loose wild art in parts I really would recommend uh, to hunt down these books at least in Europe on eBay or so uh, so this book especially is dirt cheap least but not last two comic stories by Enrico Enrique Preccia the son of Alberto uh, he and uh, the writers Barriero and Carlos Trillo are focusing more on the the old, the ancient uh, South America and uh, the clash with the conquistadors and yeah, all the old stuff you may or not uh, associate with South America. More on the mythical a uh, side is Conqu uh, Conquistadors, about two um, ex-prisoners, ex-cons, who were set free just with the one um, demand that they have to go with Columbus to uh, discover the new world. <laughs> and they fell from the edge of the world and land in this mythical ancient uh, South America where everything's possible, giant birds and 
uh, women that wear plants and everything done in a very decorative, maybe not so um, artistic, uh, kind of developed style like his father, but very good and, and very um, nice to look at style. Um, so that conquistadors and some panels are really nice and I like his uh, the inventions in the side uh, on the side of some frames and the world that uh, he is showing us and that were surely inside the heads of uh, people of way back then in, in, in a land that was just discovered and most of the part that of this land was undiscovered everything uh, was possible like sharks that uh, lived in the sand of the beach so these sand sharks trailed our heroes and here Charles comes out of the sand Was not so well for one of the two guys, but the other one got away and the next story starts. It's a series of short stories that are connected to each other but uh, could be read uh, each on its own. And back in the day, I, I think they were serialized in some magazine. So, uh, some other form and here a bit of science fiction even um, science fiction elements were used in the story so and Alva Mayor is a more realistic take on the exploitation of South America um, we come to witness really the brutality uh, with uh, which uh, the um, discoverers, the conquistadors, act. And uh, there's this hero, Alba Mayor, and his Indian friend who stay their man in a series of adventures in this world. Real nice stories and fascinating how, um, in this case, Carlos Trio uh, manages to create concluded, gripping stories um, on relatively few pages each. So, yeah, very expressionistic. As well, and maybe expressionistic is a, a, a common similarity throughout all these comics from Argentina that I've shown you. So, thanks for watching and listening. Goodbye.